that we can come together as the body of Christ, as the family, as your family, Lord. And we just thank you for that name. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here right now. Lord, we uh, just lift you up. We give you praise and glory. Father, as we continue to sing, we ask that you would be blessed as we sing from our hearts and we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we love you. And we ask for your hand to be completely on this service, Lord, as we dedicate it to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I sing praises to your name.
in your midst and cry out to your name. And Father God, we just thank you and praise you for all you've done. And we will continue. Father, just speak to us from your word and continue to guide us. And we will give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I don't know, I had to put them in because they're newer, and, and uh, but they're still 
I hear a lot of people say they're one of the Kardashians. Um, okay, and then the last one I put were the Mannings because I miss football, and uh, so they're kind of a dynasty family too. So we have these famous family lines, and the last name tells where they came from. If your name is, is Rockefeller, people assume immediately something about you, right? What do they assume? That you're loaded, <laughs> that you're rich, that you're, you know. Well, that's what comes with that name Rockefeller. If your name is Kennedy, um, no, I'm not going to go there. I'll get into trouble. Uh, if I start down the political thing. But anyway, it tells something about us, and it tells where we came from. And so my last name tells you who my uh, parents were and tells maybe who my grandparents were, and you can trace it back, and uh, we can do that. So it's the same with God, and we'll finish up with that in, in a, at the end here. But it also does something else. A name identifies us. A name identifies us. That's why we wear these name tags that say, hello, my name is dot, dot, dot. And so a name actually uh, tells other people who we are and what to call us. And we were at the uh, graves yesterday putting flowers on. And I noticed, you know what every tombstone has in common? Every single one of them has a name. I didn't see any of them that said, rest in peace. Or, you know, here, here lies no one. Every single one of them has a name. And I walked through and I recognized some names like Smith and Carson and, and uh, uh, well, now I forget the rest of them. But, and then I saw names, uh, you know, that I thought, hey, I wonder if that's maybe, uh, I think it was Bessie or Flossie, Bessie and Flossie Smith or, or anyway. And I thought, I wonder if they're any part of my family. And then I saw other family names. And, and so we know. But when you look at that grave, what do you think of? You don't just think of the name, you think of the person and their entire life. That one name says, here is an entire person's being. It's not just a name. It says, here is, and, and now we put uh, other names like uh, husband, father, or mother, or sister, or brother, and that gives more name to the story. And, and so that name tells where they come from, and it identifies us. It lets people know who we are. And the Hebrew word there is actually the same word that uh, they used in the beginning when God named things. When God named, uh, it said he separated the light and the darkness and he called the name, I mean he called the day, uh, called the light daytime and he called the darkness night. That called means he named it. He actually created the name for it. And so things are named and it identifies something to us. And that's what we use first names for. So we know what to call each other, right? <coughs> Imagine if everybody's name was Bob. How confusing would that be? I mean, you'd be like, hey, Bob, Bob. And if I said Bob, and y'all said yes, well, it wouldn't work because we would be confused. So we need different, uh, we need different names. Uh, I worked uh, at a restaurant with another Jeremy, and his name was Mulby, and my name was Smith. And so they'd say, uh, they pay, you know, Jeremy come to the front, we both come to the front. <laughs> okay, so they're like, all right, we've got to call you, like, Jeremy 1 and Jeremy 2. And I said, just call me Smith and call him Moby. And nobody can say his name right, so they called him Moby, like the book. And so he was Moby and I was Smith. And so then we knew each other apart. So it identifies us, lets people know who we are, and it makes us different from others. It separates us from each other, right? And there's only one Lisa here, right? And there's only one, no, there's a bunch of chumps here, sorry. Oh, no, I mean, <laughs> I haven't said that in so long. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. For all those on the recording, I love the kids. They call me chump and youth, so that's not me being mean in a sermon. But we, we know when I say a name, we know who we're talking to, right? And, and it identifies us, makes us different. And then something happens that parents and apparently wives sometimes do. When they use your full name, that says something else, right? If I hear, hey, Jeremy, that's one thing. But if I hear Jeremy Jordan Smith, uh-oh. <laughs> I've done something, and, and I know when my wife says that, my mom doesn't say that anymore, but my wife does quite often, Jeremy Jordan. And I'm like, uh-oh, what did I do? So we use our name differently, and it even lets us know what's, you know, what's coming or what's uh, about to happen sometimes. And then we use labels as names. We love to do this. Um, people, I don't know why they like this, it drives me kind of crazy, but technically I am a reverend. 
because I'm ordained, and so I am technically a reverend. And probably 50 years ago, people used to put that on the license plates, and, and they would write reverend so-and-so. Um, I don't do that. I don't. I just never felt the need, but it's okay if people do. But there's a, that's a name that specifically tells people, I'm not just a pastor. I'm actually a recognized ordained pastor in, in a movement. Then we have doctor. Doctor can mean a lot of things. It can mean physical doctor, as in a, a doctor with a medical degree, or it can mean a doctor as in a PhD. And then we use names and labels like bishop, pope, um, and those are all names. And then we even call people by what they do. When have, you, have you ever said this? Uh-oh, I need to call the plumber. My plumber has a name. And I don't use it. I say, I need the plumber. Because everyone knows what a plumber does, and that's what I need, is I need the plumber. Or someone says, get me to the doctor. Very rarely do I say, get me to Dr. Frost, ASAP. <laughs> I say, I need to go to the doctor. So we use that name to identify ourselves and to let people know things. We also use names of products the same way. Uh, if I say, buy me some tennis shoes, I want Nikes. I love Nike. I worked for Nike for a while. Um, selling shoes and so I want Nike shoes so when I say Nike that's what I mean I want a specific kind of shoe and of course we use the labels in that way too and so our name identifies us it lets people know who we are and where we come from our family line and who we are right now and then the last thing is a name does something really awesome it expresses deep emotion it expresses deep emotion. We have names, things like this, things that I call my wife. Honey, sweetheart, dearest, angel. Those are all things I call her. You can ask her. She'll vouch for it. I text her those things. Um, I very rarely call her Lisa. I don't know why. I just call her honey or sweetheart or dear. Uh, and, and she has names for me too. Jerk, pain, pill, Cray cray. <laughs> but you notice the terms of endearment don't exactly match up. I'm picking at her. She calls me nice names too. And those are all those are all terms of endearment, believe it or not. When I call the kids chump, I actually explained this to somebody uh, not too long ago because one of the pastors heard me call the kids chumps. And he was like, hey, you know, what's that about? And so I said, oh, they started calling me chump, and, and it's just something that they do in youth, and they don't mean it disrespectfully, and they don't mean it meanly. Uh, sometimes they call me Pastor Chump to be formal, or Chef Chump, or <laughs> different things, and I'm okay with that. Um, so parents don't yell at the kids for calling me Chump, because I call them Chump too. So, but it's, it's a term of endearment. It's a nice thing we say to people, and that expresses emotion. It means I like you. It means I'm, I'm here for you. It means uh, we're connected. We give people nicknames, right? And nicknames will express deep emotion. Sometimes we give people nicknames that are nice, like, you know, that are really cool. And then sometimes we call people nicknames that aren't so nice and, and are kind of mean or, or hurtful. And so that still expresses that emotion. But terms of endearment, good nicknames, good things like that, express intimacy and familiarity. You have a closeness that not everyone shares. Right? It, you know, uh, there, there are just things that people call each other that nobody else does. I knew a couple that were, oh my goodness, uh, about to get married, and she called him Schmoopy. And I wanted to just scream every time she said Schmoopy. I'm like, that's not even a word. That sounds like just some kind of disease or something. Oh, Schmoopy, I love my Schmoopy. And I'm like, okay, whatever. My uh, brother and his wife call each other love buckets. I don't know if that's a Kentucky thing. I don't know. Uh, but th that's theirs. And they're the only people I know that call each other love buckets. But it means you're special. You're mine. We're connected. We have something that not everybody else has. Our relationship is slightly different. And so we have these terms of endearment, and we use names that way. Unfortunately, we have to talk about this. We also have terms of anger. Right? Right? We have names that we call people that unfortunately I can't list off in the pulpit. Because we say sometimes we call people very nasty, nasty things. And we sometimes, uh, people sometimes use swear words with it and call them terrible, terrible things that we shouldn't call each other. But it expresses deep emotion. 
it, it's, it's kind of interesting to me when people get really, really angry, their, their speech sometimes changes, right? And so when they get really, really angry, they might start yelling at each other, and they might start calling each other names and, and things like that. And that carries deep emotion. Rarely do people mean the, the actual meaning of the name, but sometimes people get angry and call people names. Um, and I'll, I, I won't list out too many, but um, I've heard people call people stupid, and that one upsets me. Um, that's just not nice. Uh, you shouldn't tell someone they're stupid because they're not, um, it, by definition and just by being nice. Uh, and there are others, there's so many others, that we, we call people and those names tend to stick. Those names tend to, uh, to you know, harbor in us. In fact, I can go back to second and third grade and I can tell you the names that they called me. Shrimp, uh, Twiggy, uh, Stick. Uh, uh, runt was a popular one. Now, I probably don't look like it now because I've gained plenty of weight, but then I was the smallest kid in my class. I was just tiny. And so everybody called me names and it bothered me. Uh, obviously, I'm still carrying it around. So I remember it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we have to make sure the names we're using are nice and not names that are nasty. But the nice names express uh, deep emotion and we can use that with God as well. So, God says He wants His people, my people. He, he identifies us, He claims us, and He says, I want you to bear my name. I want you to bear my name. And that Hebrew word bear means to call oneself or to proclaim. And so I call myself Jeremy because that's my name. I call myself pastor because that's my, my uh, calling. I call myself husband because I'm married. I call myself, uh, you know, amazingly handsome and brilliant. Oh, okay. Well, I don't call myself that. <laughs> but uh, the rest of it, I do call myself. And so I am claiming all those names. Well, the first ones. I'm not claiming the last ones. So I'm claiming those names. So my people who bear my name, if we're going to claim, if we're going to bear the name of God, this is what's going to happen. It's going to show the world our family. It's going to show the world our family. Just like my last name says, I'm from the Smith family. Uh, like my mom used to say, you're acting like one of those Smith kids. And my sister would say, Mom, we are the Smith kids. But uh, it shows the world our family. So if I bear the name of God, if I bear the name of Christian, it tells the world that I am part of God's family. I'm in the family of God. Think about that. Remember. We sing it every week. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I hope that doesn't just become a closing cliche. I hope you really understand what it means. We are actually adopted into the family of God, the eternal, the most high, the God who created the universe, the God who said, let there be and there was, loves us enough to accept us into his family and adopt us. And so we can call ourselves children of God and accept his name and it tells the world who our father is and it tells the world to what family we belong to not only does it tell the world it identifies us I said a name identifies us and it identifies us as children of the king again think about that the king of kings the lord of lords we sing a song and every time I tear up when we sing Jesus you are my friend and you are my brother, even though you're the king. And I think of that and I, I just marvel at that, that I am the, the, the brother of Jesus. Jesus is my adopted brother. How awesome is that? And I was chosen by God and I was saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so it identifies me to the world. If I carry the label Christian, I must do so carefully. We tell the kids this. When we go on trips, and I've heard you say it, in fact, um, Kevin said it when I first got here, and I was really impressed, and I've never forgotten that. But we tell the kids this, when we go on a trip, I want you guys to be aware that you represent yourself, you represent your family, and you're representing your church, and you're representing God. Because we have this big old van with Church of God written on it, and so we're representing all those things. We shouldn't just tell the kids that when we take them somewhere. We tell them that because we want them to behave, right? 
And, and we want them to know that. But we should live that way every day. I call myself Christian, so I should be careful with the way I talk. I should be careful with the way I live. Because I can tarnish the name of Jesus Christ. I know pastors, unfortunately, that claim to be Christians, but then they preach things that aren't in the Bible. And that is bad. That is terribly bad because it tarnishes the name of God. And so we need to uh, support the name. We need to live the name. And the name will let the world know that we're different. And we have to act differently than the world. And so it identifies us as a child of the king. And then the last thing is, it shows deep emotion. It shows God's love for us and our love for him. Claiming that name. That's why I love to sing songs. If you notice, all the songs had a name in it somewhere. I love to sing the name. I love to sing. I love that song. And I know it's not written up there, but I always add, Blessed be your name, Yahweh, because I love that name. Because that name means so much to me. And I get excited when I sing that. And I get excited when I sing about name above all names. Jesus, name above all names. Wonderful Savior. And all those things. And so it shows deep emotion. It shows tremendous love. When we claim the name of God, when we bear the name of God, it shows His tremendous love for us. Again, He's the Almighty God. He created us. He doesn't have to love us. He doesn't have to do anything. He could have just created us and then said, that's it. But He doesn't. He created us and He listens to us and He's here for us and He blesses us and He loves us more than we can even comprehend. And so it shows His love for us and then it shows our love for Him when we sing that, when we sing uh, uh, the name above all names and when we sing to God and we sing glory to His name, we're telling Him how much we love Him. And I personally love God. I love God because He accepted me. You know, this is going to be hard for you to believe, but a lot of times in my life, people haven't accepted me. Probably because of my personality, my sense of humor, uh, I don't know, all kinds of things. I could list more. But then I realized that I was sitting there and I was thinking about this and I just got overwhelmed for a minute as I was preparing this sermon and I just get this thought. The supreme power of the universe adopted me. He picked me. Crazy, nerdy, broken, little old me. And he saw enough in me to say, I love you. And he did that for you too. He did the exact same thing for you too. Again, we sometimes use words to break people down. But he says, I love you no matter what. I, I love you for who you are, your soul. I love you for just being you. And that is awesome. And so the name will uh, show a tremendous relationship and our deep emotion for God, our Father, if we bear his name. So he said, if my people called by my name or bear my name, so that leaves us with these questions. Are we his people? We used to, I don't know if people still do this, but when I was little, uh, and you'll know the answer to this question, and all God's people said, right, I, I don't know where that came from, but all I know is when I was little, when the pastor said, and all God's people said, you had to say amen. And if he didn't say it loud enough, he'd keep repeating it. And so uh, we... <laughs> We assume that we're God's people. I've heard people say, well, all, all mankind is God's people. Mm -hmm. Yes and no. Yes, they're all created in God's image, but we're not all in this relationship. And so being a Christian makes that different. Are we actually God's people? Are we actually uh, claiming him as family? Is he claiming us? Are we calling ourselves by that name, the name of God, the name Christian? And are we living everything that goes with it? Because I think sometimes we will call ourselves Christian and we don't always understand that that comes with expectations. Just like being a, a child, my parents had expectations for me and I had to follow them. And sometimes I liked them and sometimes I didn't. But I had to respect that authority because they're my parents. We have to respect God and allow Him to set those expectations for us. And so we need to call ourselves by His name. We need to bear his name and we need to be his children and then let the world see that and let it identify us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for your mighty name. We thank you, Father, for the privilege, the honor and the opportunity to claim your name, to bear the name above every name. 
Not only just to carry it, but Father, to know that you live in us. And Father, you love us so much that you allow us to be adopted into your family. Father, as we remember those that we've lost, as we remember not only their name, but their character and all the things that uh, come with it, I pray, Father, that we would also be mindful that we carry the greatest name, the name of our Father and the name of our brother and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, help us to bear that name well. Help us, Lord, to live it out every day and help the world to just see us in that, uh, in that special way. So, Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we ask that you would just continue to lift us up as we continue to praise you. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, I know we rearranged things again, but I thought it would be kind of nice after we talk about uh, the name uh, just to give praise to the name of God. And so, we're going to just uh, kind of move the prayer request uh, and praises now so that we can give praise to the name of God for what he has done. So would anybody like to just uh, share briefly how God has blessed? What a beautiful day yesterday was. It was absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's so really enjoying the weather. Also, <clears throat> Michelle called me on uh, Monday and uh, said that Kevin was going to be getting out and swear on your life, we won't tell anybody kind of thing. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'll do that. Um, but then she called me back. We got off the phone, and she called me back, and she goes, Karina, I want to tell you how good God is. I took her a diary, a journal, um, to the hospital so she could write down everything so that Kevin would know everything that had happened. When she went to write in her journal Monday night, she had two more nights left. That was it. And that was when he was released. And she goes, you may call this a coincidence, but I think that was God. I mean, he knew exactly when he was going to get out and everything. So, um, That's awesome. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, we were blessed yesterday. We got home just in time. Uh, people were all lined up and uh, flags and, and people standing. And we had a little parade for the graduates. And... Uh, so we, we had just gotten home, so we were like, hey, well, let's go sit on the porch. So we got to see the whole senior class drive by and honk and wave. And uh, I thought it was really cool. We, we both thought it was really, uh, that was pretty neat. So um, that was special. Just thank for God's presence in our everyday life. Amen. Amen. Another little thing that might be coincidence, just uh, my heifer that likes to get out and eat the grass on the other side of the fence has continued to do that all week. And um, so uh, a couple of days ago, I tried getting her into the barn. We decided, well, she's the only way we're going to stop this is if she gets locked up and I'm out for, <laughs> for doing this. And so uh, anyway, trying to get her into the barn, and uh, it was, and I had no luck doing it. And uh, so she's out again yesterday when I'm out mowing and stuff. And, and, I would, and I said, God, if you want me to get this heifer in, you're going to have to help me because I don't know how to get her in. Went up, oh, closed one side of the barn, opened up the gate, walked her right up in there. And just, so maybe it was a coincidence, but I think God was helping me out. Yeah, so. I think so. <laughs> I think I, I several times told our cows, the Old Testament says we have dominion over animals, so you have to listen to me. I think all my cows were named Cinder Block. <coughs> Maybe I was named Cinder Block and the cows were fine. That might actually be more like that. Uh, anything else? I think it was for my kids. Uh, tomorrow, Danny will be 24 years old and just really the memories of when she was born. And I'm just so thankful for both of my kids. They're, they've been rocks for me throughout the years, and um, I'm just very proud of them. Thankful for him. Thankful. I'm thankful for having opened up and that gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, uh, my, my son told me to get Zoom, and of course, you know, I'm really excited about more electronics and stuff, so I got it anyway. And uh, he called, we had a meeting, so I got to actually talk to him and see him face to face, and uh, that was just really awesome especially after last week's sermon when I was thinking about that and uh, 
So we got to do that this week. That was pretty special too. So I'm thankful for the technology when it works. <laughs> I will, I will say that as we go into uh, requests, uh, it's amazing that almost all the pastors last week, uh, or two weeks and the last week, had technological difficulties, like all of us. And 